Hello, my little sinners. Today, it's all about Swiss chard, commonly known, sometimes known as spinach. Uh, the other name is Beta vulgaris. Vulgaris doesn't mean vulgar, it means common. Again, not so nice to be called common, but Swiss chard is the beast we're looking at. These ones are bright lights because they're bright. Uh, they don't stay bright in cooking though, so be warned. First of all, I'm going to read you a poem because I can. Indulge me. Our spinach is one of my favourite foods. I savour each wonderful bite. I eat it each day, served up every which way. I also enjoy it at night. And yes, like sauerkraut, turnips and leeks, and all kinds of peppers and shoots, I think that the beet is just perfect to eat, like all other vegetable roots. I love every leaf, every seed, every sprout, each plant and the vegetable phylum. I like to consume them right here in my room at the Lunatic Mental Asylum. <laughs> that ridiculous poem was by a guy called Ken Nesbitt. But the reason why I read the poem was because to tell you that Swiss chard, I'm sorry, there's a stalk here, uh, was, is actually kind of first cousin to a beetroot. They're kind of related. So if you plant them together and you want to save the seeds, you gotta pick one or the other because you don't want to let both of them go to seed because they will cross pollinate and you'll get up you'll neither get a beet nor a Swiss chard, you'll just get a like a mishmash of both of them. Um the Sicilians are credited with really developing the Swiss chard. Um because they didn't actually like the leaf bit. They liked the stalk. So they would grow it, they would take the leaves, chuck it to the pigs, and then chop up the stalk and cook it up. And it's delicious. It's actually really tasty. That's why I've got one here. Here's something I was eating earlier. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry for the crunching. Very good, though. So they're a cold-tolerant biennial, which means they live um, for two years before they set seed. Most professional growers who are going for supermarkets and stuff like that um, harvest them within the first year don't let them go to the second year because the leaves get a little bit smaller and more bitter after time as it starts to put all its energy towards making seeds I grow them for two years though because you can actually get a lot out of them and they grow year round and they they're okay with cold or okay with wet um, they're just and they're colorful and beautiful um, and I like to make them with the blue cheese sauce mm, very good uh, what else can I tell you? They're related to quinoa and they are a bonanza of nutrients. Vitamin C, vitamin K, magnesium and calcium. Uh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, they're, they're not, they've got nothing to do with Switzerland. Chocolate watches and Nazi gold, yes. Swiss chard, no. Uh, I don't know why they were to, it, I think the reason why they wanted um, to call it Swiss chard, oh. I don't know why they're called a Swiss chard, but basically the Sicilians were the ones who were really in charge of this. And maybe they felt like they needed to give Switzerland credit when it comes to good vegetables or something. Maybe they felt sorry for it. Maybe they traded it for, ch I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I have some. <laughs> I don't have seed today because I've planted it all. And here they are in quite big modules. I've got about three to four plants per module. When I'm planting them out, I'm going to pop them out pop them out of this, separate them carefully and plant them outside and they're pretty much ready to go in the ground now. You can plant your seeds now. They go all year round so now is a good time for everybody to plant Swiss chard and when you're harvesting it twist the stalk at the bottom. So get your stalk and twist it or cut it but I prefer twisting it. Uh, twist it right at the bottom. You don't want to cut you don't want to cut it here because then this will leave all this. This will start to rot and be gross and, and attract bugs and things like that. So rather cut them right at the bottom and keep them tidy. There's, they tend to, the older leaves tend to flop over and they get all brown and stuff. So clear those away so that the bugs don't arrive and start eating your Swiss chard. So that's it for you today. I had a request yesterday. <laughs> James asked me to talk about courgette. So... Tomorrow we might be talking about courgettes. So, and a lot of people um, love them, but either grow too many of them or, well, there's cool things about courgettes that I can tell you tomorrow. So thanks for listening and um, hope you like the terrible poem.